Hey, this is Digital Bike Computing. Today we're going to be talking about the differences between a switch and a router. Let's go over that right now. To get started, let's define the different terms. So we're talking about the differences between a switch and a router. Let's go through each and then we'll sum it up at the end. So what is a switch? In short, a switch is a piece of network hardware, so it's used in networking, in computing, to connect computers together. So it's a physical piece of hardware with multiple ports to connect devices into those ports so that those devices can talk to each other on a network. So generally, a switch is gonna connect multiple devices in one single network, in one single LAN or a local area network. Uh, you're gonna have other devices such as routers which connect different networks together, but in this case, a switch is just connecting devices on that same network together so that the connections can uh, talk to each other and you can send information between one device and another. Devices that you connect into these switches, you know, if you're at home, you've got a smaller switch. Most smaller switches at home would be either a four port, five port, you could have eight port switches. Some you may get up to 16, but it's very rare in a home environment. Small office, medium and large, you're gonna go into higher end type of switches, where you have generally 16, 24 port, 48 port switches, and then stacks of switches you know, that can connect hundreds, if not thousands of different computers, printers, servers, and other networking equipment together to allow you to have communication throughout a network. The most common type of switch that we're gonna be talking about is what's called a ethernet switch. This is a standard network port switch. They're the connectors are for RJ45 cables, standard CAT5, CAT6 cables, coming in from your devices, running into these switches. There are different types of switches available in the corporate world especially, such as a fiber switch. We're gonna be connecting fiber sorts of cables. But in this case, we're really focusing just on these ethernet based network switches. They can come in 10 meg, 100 meg, gigabit, and 10 gigabit switches. You've probably seen 10 slash 100 slash 1000. That just means that it's capable of 10, 100, or 1000 gigabit speeds. And then in the corporate world, generally you can get 10 gigabit or even more depending on what that configuration may look like. The two main types of switches are unmanaged and managed switches. An unmanaged switch is also called a dumb switch. What does that mean? So a unmanaged switch or a dumb switch is a switch that really doesn't have any management capabilities. It's not as smart as a management switch. So you just literally have a switch with all of these ports, you plug in your devices into this switch and it just gets you on the network. You know, the, the, the traffic inside of that, you know, of that route of that switch knows where the traffic should go and it just does and just sends the traffic through. You can't actually go in and configure the switch. It doesn't have a graphical user interface or, or a command line. We can go in and configure the ports. You can't configure the speed of those ports. You can't do other management sorts of capabilities. A management switch, on the other hand, does allow you to have management of that switch. Generally, you'll find these in more of a corporate, again, in the corporate world, where you can log into the switch, you can actually configure the speed, you can configure perhaps multiple VLANs on a switch, you have management, you can see sort of traffic running through, such as monitoring, you can configure quads, which is quality of service as well on the switch, so it lets you have a lot more management. Um, sometimes you need that to be able to provide a different sort of service or segregate the network within a single switch. So we touched on it a little bit before, but modern day uh, routers, say if you have a modem or router at home, they could also be a switch combined. So you may have a router or a, a modem at home that lets you connect that to the internet or give you Wi-Fi access or something like that, and a built-in switch to it. So you could have a four port uh, Ethernet ports connected to it, which essentially is acting like a switch in a all-in-one sort of device. You may also have heard the term hub. What is a hub? What is the difference between a hub and a switch? So a hub in the olden days, you don't really find these as often anymore. They are still in use in some places, but a hub essentially is a very, very not smart version of a switch. All right, we're gonna t treat them separately. But essentially a, a switch, as, we, as, we, as we've looked at, um, knows the destination and the source IP addresses or the traffic that needs to be flowing through it. So it gets traffic coming in through one port and it knows where to send it to a different port. So it actually can segregate and actually direct traffic in one particular, you know, one particular path. A hub cannot do that. A hub just sort of sends the traffic everywhere and hopes for the best. So a hub doesn't know where the traffic should be going. 
So as a result of that, a hub is going to send traffic everywhere. You're gonna have what's called collisions of packets. So, so you may have packets that drop when it's going through a hub. And you also have performance issues because you're gonna be essentially sending the traffic through every single port. And then all the devices connected to a hub are gonna say, hey, that's not for me. And it's gonna block that traffic. And only the one device that needs that traffic is gonna accept it. So it's not very smart in terms of how it delivers traffic through a network. A router is a device that connects different networks together. So what do I mean by network? So this could be from one office to a different office. It could be from one subnet to a different subnet. So a subnet would be you know, a range of IP. So for example, 192.168.1.0 and everything in between, you know, 192.168.1. You know, that range. And then the 172.16.1 range. So two different IP ranges which generally will not be able to communicate with each other. If you get two computers and you plug them into a switch, into a um, device that connects them together, one is on 192.168.1 and one is on 172.16.1, they won't be able to connect to each other or communicate to each other natively. So what you need to do is you need to stick a router in the middle of it, create some rules so that it can communicate now and essentially connect those two networks together. So a router does not necessarily connect you to the internet. Uh, this is a you know, very normal misconception where they think a router is what gets you onto the internet. That is actually a modem. So a modem's purpose is really to connect you out to the internet. The, net, the router is to connect networks together. So sort of in a way, a modem is a router that connects you out to the global internet, but not really in any, in, in if you wanted to find the terms definitively. So routers can be both wired and wireless. So depending on the setup, you may have a router at home. It could be in an office space, in more of the corporate enterprise world. We have a physical router. You're having you know, multiple devices running into a router to communicate two networks together. So for example, some switches, you've got a switch over here and a switch over here with computers running into each, and then they're on different networks, and then you've got connections into a router, into an input output, into a WAN, into a LAN port, something like that to connect the two networks together. Then you've also got wireless routers. These are essentially the same sort of thing, but rather than with physical connection, with physical network connections via, you know, like a Cat5 or a Cat6 cable, this is going over the Wi-Fi. So you've got a device connected to a Wi-Fi running into a wireless router. A routing table contains the information that the router needs to know where to send the traffic, where the incoming, the outgoing, where is the sender, the receiver, those sort of things. So it knows where to send that traffic. That information is kept in a routing table. And then in the corporate world, you can get a lot more fancy as well. So there are multiple ways to communicate between two networks. There is not just a standard one routing protocol. There are many different types of routing protocols depending on how you want traffic to flow from one network to another all different paths, different uh, sort of terminologies as well. Standard routing protocols would be uh, RIP, RIP, EIGRP, IGRP, BGP, and there's a whole range of others as well that sort of act, I guess the end goal is sort of the same, but the actual way that the traffic goes from point A to point B is different and varied. So there you have it, they are the differences, or at least the definitions of a switch and a router. So really in short, a switch is a device that you're gonna be plugging in all your computers, all your phones, your printers, your servers, into some order or another. It's gonna run through a building, gonna run at home, it's gonna be running into some sort of a switch. Uh, and that just gets you network connectivity, all the computers can talk to each other. A router is gonna connect networks together. So a router is going to be, say, connecting one subnet to a different subnet, and then you can have combinations of multiple switches and multiple routers communicating with each other. So vast differences between a switch and a router. In some cases, they can be combined. You can have routers that have built-in switch capabilities, but in the case of what we just discussed, two separate devices acting two different, uh, two different ways to give you a different solution. So there you go, that is my summary. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, I would love it if you gave me a thumbs up, subscribed as well to Digital by Computing for a whole bunch of more videos. Thanks for watching.